Good afternoon. I am recording this uh, on a Wednesday. Excuse me, on Tuesday. You'll hopefully be able to see it on Wednesday. I uh, am going to cover some of the details about the study questions and the information that you uh, should have for that as you've gone through the reading so far. Hopefully you have had a chance to look at the details, what you're seeing on the screen at this moment, the different modules. Uh, what I have provided for you, and I apologize for not getting a chance to do a video earlier. We had some issues with textbook issues for humanities and for uh, an English class and access for that. And then, well, of course, we also had issues regarding enrollment uh, in both the uh, Cardinal Connection and Canvas courses. Our class seemed not to have been as uh, involved with that. We had a little bit better uh, uh, structuring so that people who are in colleague and in this course seem to match up fairly well. Other courses did not, so we spent the first week or two trying to get all that rectified. Uh, and then textbook issues came up, so we seem to have been a little bit better off. Hopefully you've gone through and see the material here. This is the Star Here module, which took you through some of the basic details. Uh, under the course materials, um, if you uh, have the ninth edition, which you should have, there also is a way of getting a uh, an ebook, and I put that uh, here. And if you have bought the textbook, there should be a code for you that allows you also to get the access to the ebook. Um, I'm going to show you that here. Uh, very quickly all it does is you click on this and it takes you to an outside source I'm going to open that in a new window and it'll ask you to log in bear with me we have a slightly slow connection but it'll ask you to sign in register with your code uh, and you can then access uh, the uh, ebook and if you sign in here it will allow you then to, to do so. So I'm going to go back to um, to this. So you can actually access the materials online. Uh, under the Start Here module, of course, you had the syllabus and the uh, course schedule and other details that are available for you. And bear with, there you go. And then also I had posted for you, and again, give this a chance, a study plan uh, that was provided by the publisher, Norton. Uh, that allows you to uh, see how to go back through and these are just some details you can pay attention to. Um, that uh, This is again just how to go through uh, and look at it. Uh, you don't have to do those Larry workshops or anything along those lines, but that was from the publisher just giving you some suggestions about how you might want to go about planning and studying for the course. Um, what also is provided for you, and bear with us this is close uh, are some writing resources and these again are provided by Norton and what they offer you for you are a series of videos about how to develop uh, a writing assignment how the essay can work how to use quotations and MLA citation this is just a refresher for most of you I hope um, because you should already know about MLA citation format and guidelines uh, and again what that will do is take you to an outside window that's provided by Norton and you'll see there's the website WW Norton and what this offers once this finishes is a video which you can open uh, and in this case uh, this is a uh, PDF in this case um, which you can then go through and it's a little handbook on how to uh, present your paper in uh, MLA correct format. Um, so you have that one. And then as noted here underneath this section as well, you have a series of videos that also review you over the uh, MLA formatting and standards for writing. And so hopefully you've had a chance to go through all those. That's what I hoped you would do. The um, Excuse me, as I have some pop up on the screen. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to do that in that first week. These were notes that were provided uh, over uh, the areas. This was uh, a PowerPoint over the Native Americans. And if you download that, you could then hear the audio uh, with my commentaries over that. Bear with me if we're trying to get all this to, to work. It says comes not responding. There we go. Uh, likewise, underneath this overview for volume A, uh, I have a PowerPoint over uh, American 
literature in the introduction, and then you were asked to take a couple of quizzes that don't count, but just sort of give you an idea of some of the materials that you're asked to, to review and note. Here, of course, I had some more commentaries about the Native American literature, which was the opening section of the textbook, and just gave you a few details with a couple of PowerPoints as well. And this week, of course, you're working on the colonial literature. Uh, in this one, some details, some articles uh, that are about these, the growth of the American identity is one uh, that hopefully you were able to use and look at. And bear with me as this is supposed to open um, as a video here, but it's... Uh, hope that this there it comes okay there we are uh, my I'm about to say it's supposed to have opened a little more quickly but the internet here seems to be a little slow it's just a little video for you to look at it helps give you some background especially on Benjamin Franklin in the the growth of an American identity uh, what it means to be an American um, now as we go back to the module again bear with me it's a little slow moving today and there we go one more time um, you have some other details that help you to see these and uh, some details over uh, Phyllis uh, Wheatley and Philip Furneaux for instance uh, at PowerPoint and then in this next section also from uh, the colonial era because the book breaks it into a couple of different backgrounds um, we have uh, this section uh, and in this particular one, you have some notes over William Bradford, and this is also another uh, PowerPoint that I've done with commentary about uh, William Bradford and Mary Rowlandson, the journal uh, that she published, and about the Mayflower. And I think actually these two modules are out of order. Let me make sure these are put back in. Yeah, for some reason it got shifted. I must say that's not quite how the order should be. Benjamin Franklin should come after Mary Rowlandson. So this is what's happened. It got shifted for some reason. Uh, but if you look at this particular one, you can click on this, and it will show the PowerPoint here uh, within Canvas, but the audio is not available. Uh, you have to download the PowerPoint, so just click on this. Download the PowerPoint, and then when you open the PowerPoint, you can then click on the audio and listen to that as you watch the slideshow. And I have my comments about Bradford and Rowlandson in that one. So hopefully that will help you as well. Uh, and again, we're going to go back here to look at the setup one more time. I apologize, the uh, order seems to have gotten flipped for some reason. So I've just moved that and corrected it. Uh, Sometimes things happen within Canvas that we're not quite sure. But this will give you some details about John Smith. I have some lecture notes over those that you can read over. Uh, Smith was an interesting figure uh, coming over with the uh, Jamestown settlers um, in uh, 1607. And he was an adventurer, an individual who uh, we probably know from some of the legends probably more so than anything else, uh, such as the Pocahontas story. Uh, if you saw the Disney version, it's not quite accurate, uh, but uh, uh, he he was able to convey a sense of a big personality, a big individual, and when you go through the readings in the book, you'll see how he wrote that down, and the details that are offered there, they give that sense of, of a man who was trying to convey um, the the drama, the tension of what he found in a new world and try to make it a big adventure for all. And you can look at those details. Um, and when you move on through these, I'm going to close this section here. Um, I then have you move to volume B. And we start seeing some writers after that time. Uh, and in each of these sections, we have... Uh, some lectures that I've recorded, provided for you, some other commentaries about these particular authors that we're going to focus on. Um, likewise, as you go through here, we move into the Romantic period and then eventually get to Hawthorne and Poe, and there's some other details there. And I've tried to set up all the readings, 
Now down to this section, you will see the study questions. And you have your first set of study questions that are open now. That should be available for you to look at and you should be working on these now. And these study questions uh, are very basic questions uh, asking you to look at the readings uh, that you've done so far. And excuse me for what's popping up. Um, and it's not going away. Well, I apologize for this. So, it is supposed to close. So, it is not wanting to close. There, finally. Sorry about that. These things pop up all the time. Uh, but the study questions are really very basic, asking you to go over some of the details. Uh, when you look at the letters that Columbus wrote back to Europe, the letter, for instance, that he called the letter of discovery in your book, or that he wrote to uh, Ferdinand and Isabella. Look at the details that he provided. Um, and many of those are, as it says here, assumptions that he wanted to make. Starting with the idea that he called these natives he found Indians. Uh, the idea about the land and what the land involved, the uh, topography, the um, features uh, of the islands that he saw. Uh, and he did not necessarily land on all the islands. He did not necessarily explore the islands. He would instead have his men question uh, a couple of the natives that they would meet and try to get views from there. And then he would take that information and write about it. And he uh, uh, did this in connection to Europe and how he called it a uh, land of, of wonder. Uh, and he named it Espanola uh, and the idea of what he saw there. Um, this attitude of the uh, Europeans coming into the New World its going to be an attitude that um, is going to be particularly difficult in a number of ways uh, and challenging because of what they see. Um, with um, Cabeza de Vaca, who also wrote about his exploration, we see a slightly different view. Many of the Europeans who came over on in search of what they could gain, what they could then take back. Um, the Vaca, um, when he met the people and spent time with the people, uh, comes away with a different impression. What these people were like, what these natives were, who they were, what they had about them. And he offers you a slightly different view in, in his writings, where he has a, an appreciation, if you will, of what these people meant. Again, with John Smith, as I was saying earlier, he tended to be a big figure and try to com convey that largeness of his spirit, his exploits, what he gained and what he did um, to a theatrical, loving uh, English audience. So when you go through those aspects, look at what he writes. When you're answering this question, look at why he wrote and how he wrote, the details that he provided, and that will help you to, to uh, understand his adventure, as it's noted here in the question. The next question about William Bradford, if you listen to the PowerPoint and read over some of the other details, that will help you. But in particular, you need to look in the textbook uh, at a particular aspect where he uh, is commenting about the challenges that they had that first winter, their desperate situation, and how they are aided in this by Squanto. Uh, and so Bradford writes about this aid they received and what the aid was, why they received, why Squanto did this, what made him, Squanto, as they, as they called him, actually want to try to assist these uh, ones we call the pilgrims. And when you look at those details, you'll see that um, the European or English attitude in trying to understand the motivations sometimes were, were based upon other areas and other aspects, and they didn't quite always catch the details, but he also looks at this idea from the perspective of an individual that was Bradford's uh, being driven to look at it from a perspective of a man who, who feels that what they're doing, what these pilgrims are doing, was driven by a spiritual aspect. And that takes us to the next question. When you look at the Mayflower Compact, uh, you can look at the details, what's put in there, how they phrase it, uh, what attributes the sires of this gave 
to their purposes, their calling to this new world, and how they felt they were being led to that new world. So hopefully this will give you some idea about the study questions and what you were expected to do there. Going back always to the readings, using details, using specifics to help you understand um, how these individuals that we now call the first Americans um, were looking at their lives and what they were seeking to do. So that's what those study questions are asking you to do. It won't be long before your first essay topic is going to open. Uh, this essay, uh, in fact, uh, let me check the saying that topic should be opening this week. Um, this is my little view of it. it tells me when it should open. Uh, yes, it's going. To, in fact, it should open today. It should have already opened, so I thought it did. I want to make sure. Um, and so you should be able to access your first essay topic, and I want to talk about that one so we can look at it as soon as it goes back here. Again, bear with me. A little slow connection at times. And here we go. There it is. So your first essay a topic also should have opened today. Uh, and within this essay, um, again, you can click here to download the topic, or it will also appear here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it for you. Uh, zoom this up. Here we go. Make it a little bigger. Uh, I'll give you this image of uh, a painting that tries to capture the uh, pilgrims. And what this is asking you to look at, excuse me, as it's downloading, uh, I want you to consider the following points and select one particular approach over one of the issues that the readings from the uh, writings of the Native American myths through the colonial um, and that. Uh, you're going to ask to discuss attitudes that early American literature, uh, both oral and written, presents in regard to man and his world, man and nature, the relationship man has toward nature and toward God. So you're going to, of course, demonstrate for me hallmarks of good writing, that means correct grammar, proper pun pun punctuation, other mechanics, usage, following MLA guidelines, which is why you have the uh, access to the MLA uh, uh, fine points. Essay is going to be about a thousand words or so. You can write longer. And excuse me that this date did not correct. It was supposed to have corrected. Um, so let me go to this and we'll see if I can correct this. Bear with me. Uh, this was corrected when it was uploaded, but the wrong file seems to have uploaded into. Uh, canvas so I'm going to fix the date here as soon as we get this all working and I'm going to apologize for the disruption uh, I noted that the file the proper file had not loaded I went back and corrected it so we're going to pick back up here so this is your first essay topic um, again you'll note that uh, it is concerning the early readings from the Native American through the colonial settlers as it notes here uh, and I comment that you're going to be focusing on certain aspects. It's due by the 27th, which is a Friday. Uh, you have till it says 11 p.m., but really you have all the way through um, almost till midnight that evening. And I actually also give you a little buffer just in case there's some issues. So I, we have a little little lag time in between the actual due date and when it will finally uh, shut off. Because as good as we like to think Canvas is, sometimes there are problems. But you'll notice that there are certain points that, that are made in regard to key aspects, key ideas that you should have garnered as you read through the, the, the various uh, assignments in the textbooks. First one talks about the Native American cultures and how they view themselves in regard to their role fitting into the world around them, into the natural world. Um, many of the Native American cultures refer to the Great Spirit, as it says here, from whom all come and to whom all will return. Um, one group, the Lakota, of course, is in the Indian. The Native American is a translation from uh, uh, the Lakota perspective. This was a translation that was done. The spirit of the land is vested. Uh, it will be until other men are able to divine me its rhythm. Men must be born and reborn to belong. Their bodies must be formed of the dust of their forefathers' bones. So this expresses an idea that the Native American is kin to all living things. 
and he gave to all creatures equal rights. This is a translation, uh, as it says here for you. Everything of earth was loved and reverenced. And so we have this idea of how the Native Americans, in this particular Lakota perspective, uh, sort of representing how all the Native Americans felt about where they fit in in the world, in nature. A second point is that the Puritans see themselves in a different way. Um, that uh, their actions would be meaningful, that what they did in the world, as it says here, their strivings and sufferings, uh, would produce a perfect peace and security eventually. That as they came to the new world, they would be able to shape their destiny um, as God had led them. Um, that the will of God here, as it says here, would lead them to reshape society and government as it needs to be. Um, they believe that their ability to master their evil inclinations, because it said man is sinful by nature, that they would um, be able to eventually, if following the will of God, create a society that would be a godly, disciplined world. Uh, third point, that others, although coming for result of religious persecution, separating themselves, etc., um, uh, as the pilgrims did, others did not come for that reason. Rather, uh, as the Jamestown colony, which predates the uh, pilgrims, the Jamestown colony was basically, as it says here, businessmen. They were commissioned to go to the New World and find what they could pursue commerce. They literally were a company, the Virginia Company, which was an incorporation that had investors and sought to make a profit. Um, just as the Spanish had made a profit elsewhere in the New World, they were attempting to do that. Uh, the colony did not have the luck, if you will, that the Spanish had, had to find gold and precious jewels as the Spanish had found when they um, encountered the Aztec and Inca cultures. Rather, eventually, the fortune, if you will, that would be made was based upon agriculture. Um, that one of the crops that they began doing, brought by John Rolfe from the uh, West Indies to the Jamestown colony, was tobacco. And that proved to be the money crop. And other areas, other settlements began to follow along with that. Capitalism then spurred the colonies. It was a capitalistic endeavor. Almost every colony originally started as, a, as an investment opportunity by a number of individuals. They were corporations. And you have this comment that capitalism came in the first ship. So we see the Native Americans with their focus upon how man needs to fit into the world around them to the pilgrims who and other settlers who came for religious aspects trying to create a world that they felt met met the standards that God wanted to other settlers coming to gain a sense of profit. So what I'd like you to do for your essay using one or more of these points, again you do not have to discuss all three but you can, you're going to discuss the perspective that the Native Americans, the early American settlers had. Uh, what they saw the role as being, what it should be, what man, capital M, mean mankind, should be, how man should behave, should act, in order to achieve what is wanted. So you can regard and discuss any of these or all of these. Nature, as Native Americans saw it, as opposed to how the European settlers saw it. Uh, divinity, God, great spirit, whichever word you prefer. Um, as shown by the Native Americans and as the Europeans, a sense of work ethic, responsibility to the individual uh, in contributing to the world and contributing to the society that is created. And then likewise, monetary gain, capitalism, commerce, and how that impacted the new world. I'll give you about a thousand or so words as a limit, but you're, you know, I don't want you to be feel limited by that. You'll probably just go discover that you may need more than that, especially as you're using examples from the textbook, which you will need to do. And as you use those examples, please remember to cite that. 
Um, you may also use some other information that I have posted for you, some of the handouts, the lectures, uh, the articles that are all posted there. We'll provide you some background material, and so you can use those. I do not want you going outside anything that's not posted in Canvas or that's in the textbook. Rather, I want you to draw that material from the text and the posted material, which you will then, of course, credit according to the MLA formatting. If it's from the lecture that I have provided, the citation is simply uh, read, comma, James, period, lecture over, PowerPoint over, and you'll have the name of the PowerPoint. Uh, and just provide it that way. If it's an article, well, of course, I will have posted for you the uh, details of that article, who wrote it, uh, and the citation for it. And you'll simply have to do the proper citations and follow along those lines. This is an essay that you're going to get an opportunity to explore what helps to establish the early images of the Americans, both Native Americans and those who, although from Europe, become the Americans. What seem to be their values, their priorities? What seem to be the motivation for them to behave as they choose to behave? Whether it's the Native Americans and their culture and how their stories reflect their values to the Europeans who come and become the first Americans in that way uh, and what they thought, what they were hoping to accomplish when they arrived here. As you're looking at these details, please pay attention to what it's about, what goes on, how it's supposed to be, in a sense, an essay focusing upon one, two, or three of these points. Again, you don't have to write about all three, but you can. And about these bulleted uh, ideas contained here, about nature, about divinity, about work ethic, about capitalism, uh, the role of gain, if you will. And so I want you to focus on those as you write your essays. Hopefully you're having uh, success with the study questions. Those are supposed to be coming in by the end of this week. I'll try to get those all marked uh, and commented on for you by, um, if not the weekend, at least by the first of next week. And that way you'll have some, some view about some of the ideas that you might be able to incorporate as you're working on your essay. You have about a weekend. Uh, you have a, actually uh, a little over two weeks now for the essay. Uh, 17 days is opens today. It's not due till the 27th, so you have a little over two weeks uh, to be able to work on this. Give you a chance to explore some ideas, to catch up with your reading, uh, and follow through with all those details. Again, if you have any questions, as is noted here, please contact me. I'm in my office, as noted in the uh, syllabus and schedule, uh, usually from a little after 12 o'clock till 4 o'clock each day, Monday through Thursday. Not in the office, usually on Friday, so it's a little hard to get, you can't call the office then. Uh, if you will send emails Monday through Thursday, I will try to check on those and respond to you by the next day, if not that day. Uh, when you send something on Friday or Saturday, it may take me a little longer to get to it. I don't always check them immediately. It may be later in the day on Friday before I even look at it, uh, at the email. Uh, and likewise, over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, uh, I usually don't start catching up until late Sunday evening, uh, where... I have time where I can finally get in there and start looking at everything at that time. Uh, and so you may not get a response until the next Monday. Uh, please don't wait till the last moment to be working on this essay. That's why I've tried to give you enough time um, so you can get this idea of how to approach it, what you need to write about it. Uh, go back over your readings, take your notes, look at the details that I've provided, look at the notes that I've offered as well. The study questions should help give you some perspectives about uh, some of these issues, but um, they're focusing on some very other particular ideas, so hopefully that will help you as well. Again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.